so if you've noticed, my channel has been a little bit slower. I guess slower, slower than I've been wanting it to be over the past uh, few weeks. Because of course, originally I I did say I was going to make Vanguard episode reviews, and I did originally go, you know, I'll I'll, I'll skip episodes here and there, and. I was gonna skip episodes here and there. I was gonna only skip like, you know, half the episodes or so. I was gonna like skip one, do another, uh, and like do a video where I combine two. And that was like the original plan. I wasn't gonna skip that many basically. And it was still gonna be consistent Vanguard episode reviews. And maybe I shouldn't have promised that. But at a level here, this is gonna be like a very honest video. Um, I stopped making these Vanguard videos and I will probably keep making some every once in a while but I stopped making them at any kind of like frequent or consistent pace and I haven't made any in ages because I've stopped watching the show yeah uh I've not dropped it or anything I've not been like okay I'm not gonna watch it anymore but yeah I lost interest I just don't care uh and of course, it's going to be a very, very, very lengthy and intricate video about why that exactly that is. And I'm going to put my arguments forward. But also, this is going to be an unscripted, well, as you can tell, it's going to be an unscripted video and everything. So, yeah, whenever I get opinionated like this, because I want to make videos, and, and this is why I stopped, you know, with the consistent Vanguard videos. Uh, also, the audio sounds different. That's because I'm in a different setting right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have any notes. Like, I usually I like watch the episode and I write notes down. And I look at the notes. I have not seen any Vanguard episodes in at least a good couple weeks, and I have not written down any notes. So this might be a quick, uh, this might be a train wreck, especially considering this actually has to be the one where I articulate my opinion in a in a, in a, in a way where I actually win people over and, and get people to uh, like see things from my point of view. Because uh, I imagine that the general consensus of the reboot, and feel free to discuss this in the comments. Because I do, I want to see other people's opinions. But I imagine the general consensus is, it's solid, right? Like, the, the, the consensus is, the reboot is solid so far, it's a fairly big step up from the original so far. I imagine that's the general consensus. And at the beginning, I was kind of feeling that. At the beginning, I was like, yeah, you know. A big improve like we got we got like the subtle improvements here and there and I was excited I mean you can go back and watch those videos I was excited and I don't regret being excited or anything that's all fine but the whole new series like feel has worn off for me you know like the excite the excitement of there being a new series at all has worn off for me and it's just become like a weekly like okay yep Every Friday slash Saturday, I've got to watch the new Buddy Fight dub and sub and the new Vanguard dub and sub. And I just stopped bothering. No, no Buddy Fight. Buddy Fight's going to get its own video soon because, oh my god, I love Buddy Fight. Buddy Fight Ace. I Yeah, seriously. A few weeks ago, if you... A few weeks ago, I would have thought I was crazy for saying that the current Buddy Fight is way better than the current Vanguard. But yeah, Buddy Fight Ace amazing i love it it's so entertaining so far i it's such a good series but that wants its own video i saw a video i didn't actually watch the video but i i got the notification because i'm subscribed to kevin jones uh reviews who's a great reviewer he also reviews card game anime uh he does much more consistent episode reviews uh and I saw that he he went silent with the Vanguard reviews, and I assumed that was because he was getting bored as well. Like, okay, this is a reboot. There's only so much we can really say, you know? There's only so much to discuss with the reboot. And so I assume he just gave up with making the videos at all. But then he came back and, and, and made a video. I think the title was something along the lines of why why every card game anime fan should watch the new Vanguard reboot. And... Gotta be honest, haven't seen that video. The reason, by the way, uh, is because I care about plagiarism. Uh, I, 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 I am so scared of accidentally plagiarizing someone and accidentally stealing someone's, like, talking point or their argument. You know, I want my, like, my channel lives or dies basically on my opinions. I've got nothing else, really. My production values are so bad. 
you know, and like the quality, like the technical aspects of my videos are so bad that it's like my opinion and how I articulate that opinion, basically all I've got going for me at this point, apart from maybe the thumbnail drawings, but even then YouTube algorithm stuff is trying to get rid of that too, eh? Um, and so I'm really scared of, you know, like taking his ideas and stuff. And so whenever I see a video like that, I always wait until after I've already done a video talking about a similar thing until I watch the video. So I can't speak for the quality of his videos or exactly what points he brings up. I will watch it after this show. And so it's safe to say he has a, or has, he has a different opinion to me because I don't think that every card game anime fan should watch the reboot in fact honestly so far i think none should and that sounds like a bit of like hyperbole an exaggeration but so far it's you know it's stylish it looks cool the dub is good the sub is pretty decent you know like it's fairly entertaining but it doesn't do anything revolutionary at all it does not do anything new nothing new nothing new nothing nothing at all and I've always been in the mindset of if you're going to reboot something, you should change things. And, you know, they, to their credit, they have changed things. But the changes they've made, and I'll get into a bit more detail a little later, the changes they've made have been changes to things that are just as generic and predictable, if not more generic and predictable. This reboot has basically been streamlining the original. And I know what they're thinking. They're like, okay, we're fixing the pacing, you know? We're going to be fixing the... Uh, I feel like at this point, it's really important to say I have seen up to the second episode of the Foo Fighter arc, of the Team Asteroid arc. So, you know, the cliffhanger where Aichi's like, oh, you'll be the one picking up Kamui's cards, which is admittedly a, com uh, which is admittedly a really cool moment. That cliffhanger, I haven't seen past that. That's what I've seen up to. I was going to watch the newer episodes but I don't think they're relevant to my point. Maybe the newer episodes that have had since then uh, do something that will change my mind. If so, that will warrant its own part two, you know? Yeah, I guess that's just kind of get down to the nitty gritty with it. The problem with the Vanguard reboot is that it doesn't do anything to warrant the reboot. So on an episode to episode basis, it's fairly enjoyable. And that's what carried it for its first five or so episodes. I think the first five or so episodes were great. They did a good, they did a decent enough job of like shoving these characters in front of us and having some fairly entertaining card fights with some pretty good like foreshadowing and attention to detail. And I liked it. I was like, yep, strong first five episodes. But then when we get into the NWO arc, I lost interest. I watched it, I still watched it weekly. But I was like, okay, and it's still technically a good arc, you know, like there are some good card fights during that arc. But overall, the arc as a whole didn't really offer much for me. And I feel like this is a good time to mention, someone mentioned in one of my comments section, I'm not going to call them out directly, but they were like, oh, can you stick to being objective with your reviews or whatever? Because I like objectivity in my reviews and I'm immediately going to say, nah, I can't do that for you. I'm not an objective person. I talk about what I like. And what I specifically like, you know, you can have a different opinion to me and that's fine. But if I was to have an, an objective opinion, I probably wouldn't be spending my time praising various different card game anime on my channel, you know. The, the, so, yeah, the NWO arc was fine. It felt bland. Like, it didn't go back and flesh out. Like, because by this point in the original Vanguard, we actually went back and fleshed out and started fleshing out characters. We went back and started fleshing out Masaki. We went back and started fleshing out Emmy. you know? And sure, it was slow-paced still. And sure, Misaki's arc was fairly cliche. But, you know, her getting over the death of her parents, there's something there. And... I wanted them to go back and do more of that with Misaki. But the only time that's ever been mentioned, as far as I'm aware, is the fourth episode where they have her first card fight. And that's it. Never gets mentioned again. I mean, it might still get mentioned again soon, but like the whole thing with like the key around her, her, her necklace and her opening the box and Emmy letting her get over the head parent. Yeah, that's gone. Character development? What's that? We don't care. We're going to shove as many characters in front of you as possible. And sure, Vanguard's, one of Vanguard's benefits was the large cast. 
And I agree, the large cast is great. It's used amazingly on Link Joker. But you gotta actually, you know, like, build up the cast. You can't just shove them all in front of us at the same time. Oh, in the first five episodes, we're gonna introduce Q4 and Morikawa and Miwa. Okay. And then in the NWO arc, we're gonna introduce Nagasa and Goki and... Uh, Leon and just and before we get the chance to actually you know develop them or flesh them out in any kind of capacity at all we're gonna shove Team Asteroid at you we're gonna shove Ren we're gonna shove these, these others at you and I just don't care and I've seen the argument thrown around that like well the original exists if you want to give a shit about these characters and see them develop then you can just watch the original this is to kind of this is like the crash course this is like rushing through it at a, at, a, at a breezier tone, I guess. And I don't agree with that. I think to be a good anime, it needs to stand on its own. If this was a sequel, I would be like, yeah, sure. If it's a sequel, then absolutely, you should have to watch the original to understand the characters. But this is a reboot. And a lot of the marketing I've seen for this has been aimed at new audiences. I've seen a bunch of marketing in like magazines and stuff, trying to like introduce Vanguard to new people. New people aren't going to go back to watch the original if there's already a currently airing reboot, you know? I think, mm, yeah. And and that's the problem because this new one is overcompensating because of course the problem with the original arc was that it was too slow paced and it felt like it wasn't going anywhere. But at least whilst it wasn't going anywhere, it was actually taking its time to develop and flesh people out. It would flesh out a character before moving on to the next character. Ren and the rest of the Foo Fighters don't get introduced until halfway through the original Vanguard. 30 episodes through, around about then. Maybe not exactly then, but you, you get my gist. Whereas with this, uh, we're going to introduce them like 12 or so episodes in. 10 episodes in, around about then. And it just doesn't work because the stakes being... I mean, and this is the thing, right? I was like, when the reboot airs, right, my favorite part of the reboot will probably be the Foo Fighter arc or the version of the Foo Fighter arc that they do because that'll be the part that they can most easily expand upon and actually improve because that's the arc I don't like in the original. That's like one of the only parts of Vanguard I actively dislike and so they can improve upon it you know they can they can do anything else they want with it. They can go in any other direction they want and improve upon it. Great that sounds perfect. Because, you know, their version of the Link Joker slash Deleters arc probably isn't going to be as good as the Link Joker arc in the original anime. But at least with this arc, you know, there's a low bar. They can jump over that pretty easily, right? I'll get into what they do with the Foo Fighters arc in a bit. Because they went a direction with the Foo Fighters arc that I'm not happy with. Yeah, they somehow, they had a low bar to jump over and they didn't jump over it. <laughs> But again, I feel like I should kind of go back and, ex and, and expand upon my points a, a bit more with the NWO arc a bit more. Because they had some cool card fights, but they flashed over them too quickly. They keep skipping over large chunks of the card fight. And it's like, well, and people have been like, well, they only skip over the first few turns. And the first few turns debatably don't end up being that important in, in the long run of the card fight. And I think that's bullshit. I think anyone that's ever played a card game before knows that the first few turns are vital. The first few turns of a card fight where you, you know, you get your opening hand, you mulligan, you set up your forces and, and build up the field and learn your opponent. You see your opponent fighting for the first time and react to them and figure them out. The first few turns are the most important turns of a card fight. And so for them to consistently every single episode skip out the first few turns of a card fight is frustrating. It's as if this anime doesn't like the thing that it's supposed to be an advert for. Show a full card fight. I'm not expecting every single card fight to be shown in full, but if you're gonna have big long tournaments like this, you gotta show the entirety of some of the card fights. More than half, preferably. Like, come on guys. Like, there's a middle ground here, right? Like, yes, I understand. I, I probably contributed to why this new reboot is so fast paced by being one of the most vocal people to complain about the slow pacing of the original. I get that, you know? Uh, and before, wow, this guy has such a big hubris that he thinks Bushiroad actually listened to his criticisms. Uh, I don't know, but I know that they listen to criticisms 
whether it was specifically my ones or not, you know? There's a middle ground. They're, they're overcompensating by going too fast and shoving too many things in our face and raising the stakes too quickly. Like, I'd, I thought it was kind of clever, a bit cheeky, but kind of clever to skip past the Asia circuit in the way they did with the bait and switch and be like, oh, actually, it was Leon Soria that was going to the Asia circuit arc, not Aichi and the others. Okay. Fair enough. I guess that's a cheeky bait and switch. Okay, that's an okay way of establishing Leon's character then, I guess. I mean, I think it personally would have been cool. I mean, it would have been maybe a bit more bland and a bit more straightforward to have that just be an advert for the Asia Circuit arc. And then boom, now Aichi sees the advert and goes, oh, I want to take part in that. And the next few episodes are him learning how to use his deck better, developing as a character, growing stronger slowly over time so that he can qualify for the Asia Circuit. I mean, maybe that would be a bit boring and done before, but hmm, what they did instead was way more boring and done before. So let's get into it. Let's get into the, 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 the two episodes, the first two episodes of the Foo Fighter arc. The two episodes that made me go, yeah, no, this reboot just isn't. Like, it's the one that just kind of flicked the switch in my brain and go, Okay, so, you know, the first five episodes were good. They were actively good. I was interested to see what direction they would go in there. And then at the NWO arc, I was like, okay, fine. It's still salvageable. And then the Foo Fighters arc started. And again, maybe it gets better. And maybe you saw these two episodes and was like, oh, this is really cool. A threatening villain in a card game anime. Yeah, hmm. Okay, let's get into it then. So I really hated these two episodes. Uh, I, I really did. I really didn't like these two episodes. These two episodes did nothing for me other than the scene where Aichi goes, oh, you'll be the one picking up Kamui's neck. I thought that scene was kind of cool. It was a bit out of character for Aichi. I mean, I know everyone loves the version of Aichi that's like the Edgelord with the Psyqualia and da da da. But again, when I think about Aichi, I think about shy nerd that managed to progress to become the best in the world while still retaining the status of shy nerd. You know, like what makes his character so interesting is he's so powerful whilst also being so shy. You know, it's an interesting inner conflict and in a dynamic. And it's a more kind of realistic portrayal as some of someone who's good at a card game, basically. You know, like him just being cold, calculating badass like that doesn't fit his character in my opinion and i swear to god if anyone goes but my manga in the comments so help me god <laughs> i'm not talking about manga aichi i'm talking about anime aichi and i don't care how much of an adaptation this is i'm just talking about my opinions here don't care about how faithful things are in terms of adaptation wise i just care about what my opinions are and my opinions are i don't like, that moment was cool, but it would have been cooler if it was Kai. And you might be like, oh, but the reason it's so cool is because it's so out of character for him. And that he stands up for his friends so much that just something inside of him snaps. And I'm like, have you seen any anime ever? Because if you've seen any anime ever, you will have seen this done before, over and over again, on repeat. Every anime. And that's where my problem comes from. The Foo Fighters arc has no original bone in its entire body. Every second, every moment, every line, every plot contrivance, everything has been done before. And okay, fair enough. Originality isn't necessarily a, a, you know, a measure of quality. Things don't need to be original to be good. For example, one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, recent animes to come from the past couple years or so has been My Hero Academia. Is My Hero Academia original? No. Fuck no. That No, it's not original law actually. But it's executed amazingly. It's all in the execution. But the Vanguard reboot doesn't execute it in an interesting way either. You know, like, the thing that makes My Hero Academia cool is that it embraces the cliches and, and wears those on its sleeve. And it uses those to its advantage. It takes these old tired tropes and embraces them which in turn fits with the development of Deku about him being a nerd that embraces superheroes. It's kind of like a man. It's kind of like my favorite recent thing, a meta narrative, where the show itself is the message of the show. You know, the message of the show is about how Deku 
is a kid that like embraces his love for superheroes to become a superhero despite not being born with any powers. And the show itself is an embracement of old shonen anime to become, you guessed it, a powerful shonen anime. It's clever, but we're getting off topic. Cover Vanguard V doesn't do anything like that. It does the most tired. Okay, so first of all, this... Again, I mean, I guess I've got to give him props for trying. This is completely different to the Food Fighters arc from the anime. The anime was just a very kind of standard. We're going to do some tournaments. We're going to give you the Shadow Paladin deck, so on and so forth. And I have a lot of problems with that arc, trust me. But they went a different way, way with this. They, I guess they wanted to make Ren and the others really, really threatening. Because they're like, oh, they've got like a, a gang of like hundreds of people all taking over card shops. And first of all... Characters taking over card shops like this doesn't make sense at all. And you may be like, oh, suspension of disbelief. And I'll be like, I can only suspend it so far. You know, like them being able to take over card shops like that just by winning a card fight with people that aren't even members of staff at the card shop itself doesn't make sense at all. You know, like, and you may be like, oh, but, you know, people bet their lives on card games all the time, you know. But at least with that, people are betting something they own. They're like, I own my own life, so if I lose, it makes sense. But if Kamui bets someone else's card shop on the line, that doesn't make sense. It's not his to bet. And you may be like, well, it's a card game anime. It's a cartoon, to quote Rooster Teeth for that god-awful ruby, ruby panels. I don't care, because if you don't take it seriously, I'm not going to take it seriously either. <laughs> you know, like, if you want to make a threatening villain, especially considering that up till this point, the reboot has been 100% grounded. Everything in this reboot has been 100% grounded. No supernatural stuff at all. Maybe little hints and foreshadowing here and there. But no outright, okay. And this isn't even portrayed in a supernatural manner. They don't take over the card shops using any supernatural abilities. They just take them out by somehow beating Kumui at a card fight. Okay. And then the owner himself even decides he'd rather close the card shop than let the Foo Fighters get to it. But... Why don't, if you have the ability to close the shop, then why don't you just have the ability to ban Foo Fighters from the, sh from the shop? You, you, d uh, d okay. And again, suspension of disbelief, but suspension of disbelief can only go so far when the problem is so huge and gaping. Like, I can suspend it for certain things, but the execution has to be good enough to make me forget about the suspension of disbelief. The problem at its core is the tone. Because Vanguard is in a unique situation because the reason I believe Vanguard took off is because it was marketed as a more realistic down-to-earth slice of life card game anime that was a bit more realistic. And, you know, it has supernatural elements later on. But for the most part, even when it has supernatural elements, the better supernatural arcs take advantage of the slice of life element still, like how Link Joker took advantage of the giant cast. But with this, it doesn't work because it's trying to go really dark and realistic it wants to be really gritty it wants to be the dark knight or whatever it wants to be okay so we've got a slice of life anime where so far everything's been grounded in realism and we want to create a really threatening villain but we want to keep it grounded in realism which in turn makes it darker so for example they introduce they introduce <laughs> sorry i'm having trouble even saying it they introduce the most overused cliche I've ever seen in my entire life, where, say it along with me, if you take damage in the card game, you get electrocuted in real life. And I hate it. I hate it so much. It was okay in that one episode of 5Ds 10 years ago, but having it as the core backbone for your story arc in a modern day 2018 card game anime, my current day argument, we've advanced beyond that, thank you very much. And I get it, the twist this time is that it's not supernatural lore, except again, it wasn't supernatural in that episode of 5Ds either. In fact, in 5Ds went in excruciating detail to show why the character being electrocuted makes sense not just in terms of how the technology works, but also in terms of how the person will get away with it. You say was being arrested in a prison and the prison guard was abusing his power and no one could do anything about it. With this, people can do stuff about it. People can absolutely do stuff about it. Yeah, 
So basically, they bring back the VF gloves, which I loved. In the original Vanguard, they had the, VI, the VF gloves, which were these different colored fingerless gloves that they wore during tournaments because it helped make the projection system or something work better. The, the reasoning behind them was fairly shaky, but it was something to do with the audience being able to watch the game properly. Whatever, I don't care. They looked cool. They were a nice thing to wear. It was a cool alternative to Yu-Gi-Oh's dual discs. But here, they're all black now and they electrocute people when you take damage. And if you don't wear them, then you're not a real card fighter who d d plays the game properly. And I get it, the entire point of the arc is that it, it, the real card fighters care about playing the game for fun and have se we've seen this before. We've seen it, we've seen this, we've seen this before. And I get it, it's a reboot. Obviously, it's going to regurg regurgitate old ideas, but the problem is this is less original than what they actually did in the original series. Like a reboot's supposed to change things up and make them more interesting. It's going more cliched. We've seen the electrocution thing before. We've seen characters take damage before. We've seen people complain that the card game is supposed to be for fun and not supposed to be for hurting each other with. Like literally the first story arc of G was this exact same story with Tayo. And I may sound like I'm getting angry and shouting at like 4 a.m. in the morning, which is, re that's a real thing, by the way. But it's true. We've seen it before. And what I said earlier about execution, well, the execution they're trying to have is that it goes even darker and even grittier. That's not, that's not, en that's not entertaining. Seeing, seeing like overly, like overused, like intense, like scenes of characters being electrocuted every single time they take damage isn't fun to watch and you may be like oh but that's the point it means that when uh, Aichi epic owns the villains it'll be all the sweeter because we've got to we went through all this hardship to do it uh i i mean i guess i, I guess i, I guess Maybe? Like, okay, so let's go through the good first, because there's one thing, there's one thing I like about how they execute this that I liked. And that was during the, Ka the Kai card fight, where Kai realized how to game the system. He was like, okay, the reason people lose when they wear these gloves is because their preservation instinct kicks in. They start, they're like, okay, I get electrocuted. I'll just stop myself from getting electrocuted by blocking every single attack. But Kai was like, no. In fact, a more efficient card fighter would let themselves take damage in certain instances so that their future attacks are stronger. And because of that, he wins. Or is about to win before the game gets cut out, whatever. And that's neat. That is something I wanted from Carbide Vanguard. I wanted to see, like, I want to see realistic and logical and, okay, this is how this applies to the card game. I like that. That's what I like about Carbide Vanguard. It takes this supernatural or this dark or anime element and then it applies the actual card game to it and goes, okay, this is how you get around it. I'm like, okay, that's great. I like that. That justifies one episode, you know? Like, we can give up the gloves now. Like, that was fine for that one episode. We get it now. We now know that every single time a character beats one of the other characters, it will be because they used Kai's strategy of not defending and letting themselves take the hits. I still haven't seen the, 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 the Aichi card fight during this arc, but I know that Aichi probably wins, and it's probably the same way that Kai won, where he lets himself take the damage. Either that, or he loses, and Ren becomes a more threatening villain because he sent someone else to go do the stuff for him. I whatever. <sighs> I'm complaining about a card game anime at 4 a.m. What am I doing in my life? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing I don't like making video like I don't like ne making negative videos because I can only make so many videos and like drawing the thumbnail and everything takes so long and so it's like if I'm gonna make a video I want it to be some about something I'm gonna be positive about to justify it and I decided when G was airing hey when the next Vanguard series comes out I want to make consistent videos about it because I know that's probably gonna be something I'm consistently positive about and then I found out it was a reboot and I was like okay I guess I can still keep doing, I guess I can still go through that idea about making consistent videos about it because it's like, well, at least I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good stuff to talk about with it, right? They're not going to half-ass it. Like, why would they half-ass it, you know? That panned out well. Ah, oh, Christ.
And so I feel like, I guess I could delve a bit more into my point, but I feel like what I just said kind of explains it all. I've seen characters be electrocuted for taking damage before. I've seen, it's supposed to be a game. It's supposed to be fun. Why are the villains not fun? Whatever. And I'm absolutely dreading the whole Aichi does the most out of character thing ever and takes the Shadow Paladin deck because he suddenly cares more about being powerful than he does about having fun and then Kai suddenly becomes the good guy and fights Aichi so that Aichi can learn the, the, the Shadow Paladin bad and Shadow bad bad emo bad bad emo powerful bad 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 can you tell he's bad because he wears black? He's bad. Uh, bad. Oh, we need a design for a, for, for a deck for a main villain to use. Well, since he's bad, why not just give him the good guy's deck but make it black so he can be bad. Bad. I like, I, I, sorry, I'm just like having a meltdown right now. Like it's all just kind of dawning on me how stupid stupid this whole situation is and I'm not necessarily just talking about the anime I'm just talking about myself complaining like this is it like what do I, what do I want what do I expect like they're obviously gonna do this stuff of course always this is card game animes we're talking about card games and animes never change it's always the cycle of the same two things you get the really well made light hearted one that everyone's like oh it's too light hearted and boring though I hate Zexel and then you get the cool edgy one where people get electrocuted by the bad emo bad bad emo bad and people are like oh yeah it's cool it's epic oh geez i'm having a melt i am having a meltdown oh my god i'm having a meltdown I, this is all keep this, this is all staying in <laughs> you guys are you guys are witnessing my mental breakdown like take this as a warning never make a card game anime centered channel jesus christ <laughs> Bushy Road, I wanted a, a written apology by the end of the day. Okay, no, I don't. D ignore that, Bushy Road. <laughs> Honestly, Bushy Road, all I want is is is, is, an, is one episode focused on Ultra Rare, please. I mean, I know they're getting decks soon because I saw that their decks got announced, so they are getting them. So I just want one. I just want one card fight. I don't even need, necessarily need it to be a record. Any of the three. And anything that isn't bad, bad, emo, black, bad, emo who doesn't like playing card games for fun fun F fun how dare you have fun watching a card game anime w what are you a pleb a kid Gah. jeez like i saw a twitter post and i'm not gonna post like a link or screenshot of it because i don't want people to attack a person for having an opinion Attack me all you want, but don't, you know, I'm not bringing other people into this. But I saw a tweet and it was like, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a franchise about war. It's about how dark card games are. And it's about how this and that. And I'm like, bad, black, emo, bad, no fun, emo, bad. How dare this card game advert be about fun and lightheartedness and, and, and slice of life characters. This is what happens when you all shit on Zexel. The card game anime industry died the second Zexel started airing and everyone started shitting on it. I dare it be lighthearted. How dare a pox on your house. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying for a second that more serious and darker toned card game animes can't work. 5Ds is pretty neat. The darker elements of Zexel and Arc 5 and even Vrains are pretty good. Especially when Body Fight Ace is airing, and Body Fight Ace is like a card game anime that's like light and fun, and about people having fun playing a card game, whilst also having, the you know, character arcs and slow introductions that make sense and aren't mindlessly rushed past. And, you know, it captures the joy of playing a card game, whilst also acknowledging its flaws. Yeah. Buddy Fight Ace acknowledges its own flaws and is self-aware. It acknowledges that, hey, it's kind of shitty when your friend gets a rare card and you don't, eh? That's pretty shit. Yeah, it is. Thanks for acknowledging it. That's actually a really interesting subject matter to explore. You know, the flaws of the medium that it represents, but representing it in a lighthearted way that's actually quite subtle, but it'll, get, but it'll keep getting shit on for being lighthearted anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> no, Buddy Fight will only ever be good when Ranma, when Ranma turns into a bad, black, emo, bad, ba bad, black, emo, bad. 
How how dare we have something subtle and lighthearted? I hope when Ranma gets his buddy, it's a buddy that can electrocute people to death. Like I think that somewhere within the last like ten or so minutes of this recording has been some kind of actual like articulated point and explanation. Basically, what I'm trying to get across is that the quality of the writing is what truly matters with a card game anime. Tone is important, but if something is going to be dark, it needs to be dark for a reason. And that re the reason being the same reason every single other card game anime is dark isn't good enough anymore. It just isn't. Oh, but it's a remake. I know it's a remake. I didn't ask for a remake. I asked for a third Vanguard anime with a new protagonist and a further time skip. Because, you know, I'm apparently one of the only people on the planet that cares about G still. Scripted G video coming eventually. <laughs> when I get a good enough PC setup to do a fully edited video essay to that scope. I'm sorry it's taking so long. But, you know, like... Shit on late G all you want, and late G has a lot of problems, mainly Zed, but next has a lot of problems too. And yeah, it does, but at least it focused on interesting things and was dark, but in a more subtle, chilling way. You know, I don't want to spoil it, but how they handle Tokuha's character arc is really, really well done and doesn't just involve bad, bad, black, bad, electrocution, epic, Aichi heckin' owns this guy. Whoa, he just got epic owned by the card game. Bad epic. Like, come on, guys. And, it, like, and if you like it, then that's cool. And if you like it, explain why. Absolutely, I want someone in the comment section to explain why. I'm going to start to wrap things up by saying, what do I want to have with Vanguard? I want this to be quick. I want this to be... A, a, I want this to keep going with a manga adaptation. I want it to keep breezing past everything. You may be like, why would you want that? That's the only thing you've been complaining about for the past hour. You know, why would you want them to keep breezing past everything? And that's because I just want them to end this. Not the franchise, I just want them to end the reboot already. I want it to be like around about like 70 episodes, you know, just enough time to adapt the manga. And then I want it to just be thrown and forgotten about and just bleh. And then I want the actual third Vanguard anim anime that's an actual sequel to G with a new protagonist that doesn't have a villain that electrocutes people because he's epic. Also, I want a handful of episodes focused on Ultra Rare. <laughs> you know why I like Ultra Rare so much? I like it because they're not bad and epic and electrocution. I like it because they're actually subtle and have a mysterious backstory that's never fully explained to us, which gives them an air of mystery and, and coolness to them, whilst also being a really well-written satire of Japanese idol culture. Because there, there's actually some interesting stuff there, despite the lack of screen time they get. You, you, like, people shit on the Emmy arc, because they're like, why, did, why does Vanguard spend so much time so early on on Emmy? It's to establish that Carvey Vanguard is a subversion to previously set expectations when it comes to the card game franchise. You, you know that, right? The Emmy arc is supposed to feel out of place. It's supposed to, because usually you're like, okay, Emmy's the sister. She's going to make fun of Aichi for being into a card game. But instead, they spend an extended period of time focusing on her, not only supporting her brother, but actually playing the card game and being taught by him how to play the card game. And, you know, it's, it's a version. It's something you weren't expecting, which is what makes it cool, because it's like, oh, wow, female characters in a card game anime doing things? Not in my card game anime. And that's why I focus so much on like female characters and stuff so much. Because it's a subversion. Just to, like with a lot of these animes, a female character just being there and doing a thing on its own is a subversion to the formula. And at this point, any subversion is more interesting than, haha, I electrocuted you. Whoa, I'm the real card fighter here because I electrocute people. And see... This is the arc that I expected to be better than the original. 
I expected this to be an improved upon version of the original arc that actually took creative chances and did things differently. And yeah, it did things differently to the original anime, but it didn't do di things differently to any other anime ever made. So I'm really looking forward to when they get to Link Joker because boy, if they're doing this good a job of 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 adapting the. Uh, the the Foo Fighter arc then I can't imagine how amazing of a job they're gonna do when they get to Link Joker you know the arc I actually really like uh safe to say I'm disappointed also safe to say we found out why it's in the later time slot now you know I mentioned in the first episode oh that's kind of weird it's in a later time slot I wonder if they're gonna use that as a new chance to be darker yeah how naive I was eh and then maybe in a week's time or whatever I'll catch up again and provide updated thoughts you know what, I'm just going to use this to be like, if you've stuck around this long, go watch Kevin Jones' video instead. He has a completely opposing opinion to me from the sounds of the title. I mean, it might be clickbait and he's and it's misleading. And he doesn't actually like it. And that's clickbait. And in which case, well done, he utilized more subversion than the actual anime he's criticizing. But yeah, go watch his video instead. It's shorter. It's written by someone who can at articulate their own opinions better. It's by someone who has a better sounding voice and a better technical setup. And it's definitely, and I can guarantee this, made by someone that doesn't go emo bad, bad emo black electrocution. What have we made Blaster Blade? But we made, but we made him black. What have we made Sonic the Hedgehog? But we made him black. We, we really want, we really want our audience to know that this is the black the, the 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 bad guy so we're gonna make his monster black because we really want to hammer in the yin yang thing we really want to hammer in the whole aichi is the white part of the yin yang ren is the black part of the yin yang one cannot survive without the other some of this video is hyperbole some of it's me actually going crazy feel free to figure out which parts are which <laughs>